What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're in Round Rock, Texas. Finally, what y'all all been waiting for is the Govi Pro. We're gonna be doing an installation today. We're gonna go into depth on, on everything you need to know as far as strands, how many you can connect together on one controller. That's a game changer. If you're liking this content, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss any of it. All right guys, so basically here, uh, we got the Govi Pros. We're going to do an unboxing. Um, I'm going to do a comparison on the two. What's different? What model numbers? So we're going to dive into that right now. So let's take one of these out here. So here are the first generation lights. So let's do an unbox here of the Govi Pros. Pretty neat box, different from the, the first one. Not so much. It looks like it'd be connected with Matter. Um, the first generation did not have that. It had Alexa and uh, Google. So that's that's a plus here. It can be connected to your home kit. So it comes with the instructions as well as the back. So that's good to know. All right. Okay. Still has the 3M pad on the back. Same as this one. The bulb's a little bit slightly larger than the, the first generation. As you can see, you got a one LED there just that's what the issue we've been a lot of us have been having is this uses other colors to make white this one on the other hand has as you can see one two three four five six seven leds with one designated one in the middle so you're gonna get your warm white off that's that's what was a big issue with a, a lot of you guys all right so what what you want to do is if you notice this here is the h70b this is for a 50 footer you can see the h70b for the 50 footer on that one and then here this is the new Gobi pros h706a as you can see there so you can see the difference there on that S boxes look the same we're looking at this the only difference we've seen looks like it has an auxiliary port that is different from the first first generation still connects the same with the the water seal connectors so now that was like i said that's the difference between that connection so we're let's go ahead and power these up Uh, I have a three-way here, so we're just gonna do a comparison. So there's those lights. Give it a second, just like your first generation. Start up with a factory a dream color, and let's do this one here. Connect that one here. All right. So there's the comparison of lighting. Kind of seems like this one's a little bit brighter, not so much, but you have the warm white on this here. So that's a that's a plus. Uh, so this this product does come in white and it does come in black. So you can look out for those as well. All right, guys. Here's the accessory kit. We got some 3M pads, some Govi clips, just like the first generation. So we have screws in there, mounting clips. So that's different from the first generation. You have two four footers, 
that are provided here, you can get 12 foot or I get a 12 foot extension and a four foot extension, put them together. So that worked. Pretty bulky splice connectors, but this is going to help for a lot of you that don't want to solder. Um, you still can use the water seal heat shrink covers. Uh, looks like you can uncap this. Make the splice connections. Uh, wires are color coded, you know, blue, yellow and red there. So as soon as you splice that open, that'll be uh, identifying the, the wire colors there. So it comes with two sp splice connectors here to make some transitions just in case we need to cut some some lights so here's the two four footers there looks exactly like the controller from the first generation here's your 12 foot extension and the power adapter with the auxiliary connection there well, there you go all right guys we're gonna be going over how to really work with these splice connectors that Govi has provided. Uh, it is typical, you know, your male and female connections on each side. Um, so they gave you this just in case, like in situations like this, where you have a male and female connection. Now you want to do it within the within the light. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna splice this line. When you splice the line, if you open up these two, and, and keep in mind, this side here is the male connection. So you would need to keep that that way, and the female is running back that way. So they need to go like this. So if you're going to splice right here, you're going to grab this line. Let's open this one up. So they're color coded. What you're going to do is you're going to get splice, get this line, place it with that one there. And then on this one, when you splice it here, you'll splice it here. So now you have a, f a female and a male connection. And now you can take these two lights up to the top. So that's how you would do it. All right, guys, we're going to be doing the power supply back in here somewhere and we're going to run into the attic. We're going to be starting the not starting here, but we're going to be starting right over here. And what you always want to try to do is try to get these three prongs at the end here. So you can go ahead and get a 12 foot extension up to the top. And so what the Grovy Pros have are the 12 foot extensions with two four foot extensions. So we're going to be using uh, a 12 foot extension with a four foot extension just to get up there. So that is roughly between 14 and 15 feet up to the top there. So what we ended up doing is we laid out all the strands as, as if we were gonna be laying it out and put it on, on the roof. So we ended up doing three strands to start off with. Then we did a 12 foot extension with a four foot extension. And then we did the rest of the lights at it I think I, I believe uh, we did three more strands after that and then we added a 12 foot extension just as if we were going to be laying it out on the on the roof so there's Chris there uh, on this install we're going to be doing four and three quarters we went ahead and got a, a nominal board and went and created a four and three quarter that was requested by the homeowner so we're going to be doing a four and three quarters. That was his preference. So we're going to end up doing that just like that. So here we're going to start there with the three prongs, like I'd mentioned, and then we're going to make our jump. So you always want to try to create a easy, easy install for yourself. So, yep, that's what we're doing. We're going to put all the strands back this way. We're going to offset here. Hopefully the light doesn't hit right there in the corner, but we're going to come around this side with the four and three quarters. And that should take us about three strands back. 
and let's try let's transition over to the, the attic space all right guys so i'm inside the attic this is where my brother chris is working at right now and the strands are going to be working back this way to the side they're going to go all the way back here and it will end up drilling right here and this i believe back in that cavity we're going to be drilling the the controller connection and then we'll be able to run it here and there is a receptacle right in here somewhere so we're planning on trying to at least try to get that connected up here so that'll be one controller controlling at least 200 feet All right, everyone, we got this installed. I'm pretty surprised with the 3M pads here. Seems like these 3M pads are a lot stronger than the first generation. You know, when we would use the first generation lights on these attic uh, air soffits, there the hose would just not hold up very well. So they're holding up pretty well. That's good to know. But I still recommend the clip air at, a, at each light for for many years of use of these lights all right guys gonna be coming up here to show y'all how we get the, the peaks lit so this this strand is 16 foot the uh, it's it's kind of like the set uh, the strand for the first generation was 17 foot but for some reason these are 16 feet and 7 inches so what i ended up doing is just putting three lights on the side on the right side of the top here and then uh, just realize that I'm gonna have a, a couple more lights to put on this right right side of the gable so on the first generation there's 12 lights the Gobi Pro there's 10 lights so what I'm doing here is putting a light at the peak like I've done with every other video and then we're gonna put one right here and you're probably wondering well, well, why are you starting with one bulb right over here? Well, 
16 feet is going to get me around the side. So that's how you plan that. You don't ever really need to start with the, the 16 foot strand, cutting it right in the half and put it in the middle because then you end up having to splice either there or on that side. So let's give it a try. All right, so I've started here, placed that light at the peak. I put two clips on the side. I know a lot of y'all have mentioned that why do we put two nails here? Well, if you can see closely, there's that hole in the clip. If you were to put one right in the middle of that, of that hole, you have no anchoring point. So what we do is we go right beside it. As soon as we start stretching this line, that clip will start pivoting. So that's why we put those two. I mean, and you always want to, you want long longevity of your lights lasting a long time. So that's why we do it. You know, permanent solution is for permanent lights. So I got one started here and there's uh, there's the clip there right on the side. So what I'm doing here is I placed the, the light right in the middle and then I started stretching the line and you put the clip on the side where you want the light to, to the, the line to stretch. So that's how we go about all our installs. Same over here. So that's that lights on the left side and you come back on this side, excuse the wind and the sun. So there's the light there. I'll end up putting a clip on this side because I'm stretching out the line further down. So I, I take the sticky pad off. It looks like it's holding up pretty well compared to the first generation. So take the sticky pads off and just start sticking them. And how I'm spacing it, like I said, I'm using this four and three quarter block requested by the homeowner. And we're putting it there and going and rolling with it. And that kind of hides the, the lights itself a little bit. So we're gonna continue on doing that so I wanted to get, I wanted to kind of show you guys what we got going on here. All right, I want to show you something that we kind of do here. Went in, I think we got kind of lucky with this house, you know, having no no eave jumps. But this type this type of uh, structure here, it just offsets down. So we kind of put the line clean there, and we put a clip on the side there. I mean. This is not necessary, but we like we go for a professional look. So as you can see, the line is straight and even with the four and three quarter cube. Come down, then we'll bend down here. Place a light there and turn a clean corner with three more lights. All right, guys, I have the top peak done here. There are the lights four and three quarters off the wall. I couldn't cut, I couldn't cut the corner very well here because we're gonna end up being short if I cut it with a 90. So I just kept both sides looking the same. That one's cutting the corner there. Then we just kept going down the side here. Take, take you out to see what we did with the 12 foot extension. So here we got it going down. We used a uh, hot glue gun. Kind of put some glue on that box, come back down, down the flashing, and down to the bottom. There's a 12 foot extension and the four foot extension to get it down to the bottom. So there you go. Let's take you over to the other side now. On this side, here are the three lights like I had mentioned. Take you up here so you can see. Here's the three lights there. And like I had mentioned, if you just start with your male end, the three prongs here, 
you don't have to do any splicing. So we got a 12 foot extension that will run up here. Took it tight, gave it a clip, gave it another clip, run up the top here. And this 12 foot will go up and then we'll start our lights here. So always try to start your male connections or your female connections at areas where you know you're going to use a 12 foot jump. All right, everyone, we ended up installing the Govi Pro lights. We got them installed over in that little back area as well. Here's the end result. Everything clipped, every light to anchors as described in all my Govi videos. Like I'd mentioned, start your strands with the male end here. Power is running back that way. So that way you can have a 12 foot jump here, go up and there. I had to cut it tight there in that corner because of the, the length to get to the side. Then here, started my male there. So I, I don't have to do any splicing at all. Did the back top there, did here. And all of this is 200 feet. That is a game changer. 200 feet, 12 segments, and you can apply it all through the settings. So that's about 200 feet. A lot of y'all have mentioned, like how do you run your power supply and your controller? Well, I have a outlet here that I'm gonna be drilling right about in there. I'm gonna use a three quarter inch bit, so that way I can get the power plug to come and connect there and the 200 foot lights that are on the roof line the female connection is right about in here so what i'm going to do is drill it on the outside use the the power adapter and controller and bring it over here to connect it so let's drill that real quick All right, there's a, there's a, a truss running right here. You can see that there's a bolt, light bolt there that has drilled into that. So we're going to be drilling right in here. And I went, I went up to the attic and I verified if there's any electrical cord there and there isn't. So here we are. And there you go. So that's where we'll stub out with the power plug. So we started from that front left side on the garage. So right here, we're going to be doing a three quarter inch hole and then running into the attic. Excuse the condensing unit noise. There's nothing I can do about that. So what we're going to do here, here's the female connection for the 200 foot run. I'm going to be drilling a three quarter inch hole there. That's the size of the connection. It's just three quarter, so that will fit right in there. So let's do that. And there you go. So run that inside there 
and now you have your power supply and your controller inside protected from the elements. So what we use to fish the, it's called fish line. So what we use is we use this fish line to fish the wire for the controller into the outlet. So we'll just put all these back. So it's gonna be kind of useful for you guys to just use something like this instead of having to snake everything through the attic, you know, trying to reach for it. So this is much easier. You just stick this right through the hole and then I'm able to tape it on the other side. So just get a couple of these ran. Or you could always run your power supply outside and then it messes up for uh, the next five, six months. You don't want to do that. So that's why we run everything inside the attic. Like I said, excuse the, the condensing unit. We fish the, the line through there, try to find an opening, fish the line there. Then what I'll do is I'll go inside and I'll check where the, the line is at and then I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll tape everything to that, to that line. And then I'll have my brother here connect everything. And then after that, you're all set. And then we'll, we can turn the lights on. It says, you can see, we got the fish line here that came from the hole. So what I'll do is I'll get the female, I'm sorry, the male connection attached to that. And then I'll have my brother pull it out, connect it to the lights. And the hole that I drilled is right there. So as you can see, not quite much of a distance to plug in. So there's the, there's the hole I drilled out and then here's the fish line here. So that's, I mean, the controller and the power adapter are about 21 feet and four inches in, in length. So what I can do is I can extend that out, get that attached right there through that hole and then use up all that slack come back over here and run the controller much closer to the to the front of the house so the connectivity issues are not likely uh, a lot of a lot of questions being brought up that why are we having issues with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi well iPhones are having that issue and Govi seems to be working on that so let's get this power adapter connected all right guys i got this connected to the fish line so now i'm just gonna give the fish line a little shake and my brother will know that it's ready There it goes. So like I said, that hole is three quarter inch wide. So it's wide enough to get fit through there and we get it connected. As soon as he does that, then I'll connect to the power. So it's always good to have help. Drum roll.
So we're going to be doing a splice here. This is our first splice for the Govi Pro. So I'm going to do it about right in here. I need to end the light there. So let's go ahead and take this back some. Oh, they made this a little more difficult than it needed to be. If you have any comments, guys, leave it down below. Uh, tell me if I should be doing something uh, different here. But as, as of right now, this is what I'm going to do. We're going to try to see if we can expose the wires. Seems like Govi should have sent a splicing kit for this. There's the first line there. We're going to try to sp spread out the yellow one and the blue one so they are color and they are color coded with insulation like uh, like the splice connectors so I'm gonna just peel this back some take that there I know this might not be the best way to do it but it's kind of late we have a late installation all right so there you go we got the blue yellow and red as you can see in here blue red and yellow so it's not that it won't be that difficult to identify so 22 is 22 is our last option so take about one inch off And this splice is at the front of the line. It's not at the back of the line. And what I mean by that, it's this is the female side, as you can see. This is the female side, and the male side is the back side of the the strand. So let's go ahead and twist this up. Make a good connection to that. Okay, and we're gonna take. We need the female side, so. You want to use this right there. So we'll take this off. We want to, let's see. I believe that you need to place this line right in here right on that hole. Well, actually, the cover goes in first, just like that. And then you place your wires in there so you get a sealed connection. Don't tighten it up too much because that actually is tightening up the line back here. So loosen that up, leave it loose. And let's see, we're gonna have to strain these up again. And let's see, we got red there. Oh, they actually opened up. So let's open up. Oh, my light's going dead. So I need to do this quick. So open up the doors. Close it. Yellow. Close it. Blue. There you go. Just test it out. See if it's a good connection. Like I said, this is the female connection. That was part of this here in the front so it, sh it should match so let's go ahead and bring that in I'm gonna close this side you want to work not this side but the back side because it'll start twisting the line And the only way to find out whether or not this works is by connecting it. So we got the back side tightened up and you got your splice. So let's get the tower connected there. Let's see if that works.
right. Uh, so we get the controller together here. There it is, like that. And then we got this moment of truth. Well, well do you know, guys, it works. So it doesn't matter whether you splice the line, it actually worked. So for all of y'all that think that you can splice them at the end or splice them with groups of four, it doesn't matter. I just spliced it at the front and more than likely using the mail connection, you can splice it at the back. So Govi did a good job. It works, guys. All right, guys, so since I went ahead and spliced at that connection, we ended up doing six strands plus three, that equals nine. So when we installed uh, the device in the app, it requested uh, if we had spliced any of the other lines and you have to say yes. So we ended up doing that and then when we hit the yes, it recalibrated because if you look back here, we had some lights that were out and until you recalibrate it'll pick up whether or not you spliced so that worked so you guys need to make sure that when you're going into the settings and you do nine segments or or 10 or 11 you got to make sure that you hit yes if you spliced so you can recalibrate if you did not then just go ahead and just say uh 12 segments or nine segments and it'll ask you yes or no if you splice yes or no and that is it thank you guys and possibly even do 12 strands in one in one uh ah. so if you like this video hit the like subscribe. today we're gonna be doing an outdoor permanent lighting go ah stupid car start over watch it Chris Chris